The pursuit of high yield can be tempting for investors seeking greater returns on their investments. However, it comes with inherent risks that need careful consideration. Be wary of investment opportunities that seem too good to be true. Yieldmax has put out a lot of ETFs. No, like, seriously, they've put out a lot of ETFs. If you went on their website, you would see 19 single stock ETFs with some juicy yields. I'm talking yields as high as 165% with Kony, an option income strategy ETF based off of Coinbase, to as low as, and I'm putting low in big air quotes here, 15% with JP Morgan Chase's option income strategy ETF. But with so many funds out there, wouldn't it be nice to have an all-in-one ETF giving a well-balanced portfolio that we all seek? The prayers of the universe must have been answered. Yieldmax launched its newest fund on January 16th called Yieldmax Universe of Options Income ETF. They chose not to go with Yieldmax Planet Earth not Yieldmax Milky Way, but Yieldmax Universe. The universe encompasses all of space, time, matter, and energy. Everything that exists, including you, is part of the universe. So when the fund is called the Yieldmax Universe, they own everything under the sun, both now and forever Yieldmax. They're going to invest their assets into Yieldmax and rebalance the fund every single month. So it's like they're restocking the vending machine, the candy's coming in different each month. This is to make sure each yield max fund is equally weighted in the fund, so no particular position gets too big. It's also done this way to make way for future ETFs the provider may one day have. So if a new ETF comes out next week, don't worry about it, they got you covered during the next rebalancing. Each yield max fund is about 5.8% of the portfolio. Now, before you start celebrating on how you think you found an easy money glitch, and before you start planting those magic beans, let's actually take a closer look at these funds. So the fund is actively managed and seeks to return current income. That's its main goal. It calls itself the fund of funds, meaning it's investing in ETFs rather than shares of a company like a typical ETF. The fund has yet to pay out any distributions, but it should do so every single month. Remember not to confuse distribution rate with actual return of the fund. Distributions are going to be variable and change every single month, nor are they ever guaranteed. Companies are never obligated to pay you dividends, and they're not a human right, so no matter how badly you want them, the company doesn't have to give you jack. Now, people have been saying if you take all of the yield max funds and do an average of the yield, it's going to be in the ballpark of 50 to 60%. So that's what I would maybe expect. Each underlying Yieldmax ETF employs a synthetic covered call strategy that's going to seek to generate income from options premium and provide indirect exposure to specific securities share price returns with a cap on potential gains. The big risk here, and yes, there's definitely a high level of risk of these funds, despite what some YouTubers or some people on Reddit might say, you're not getting a ridiculous 50 to 60% yield without some risk. So this risk comes with the investment strategies that Yieldmax is incorporating with their ETFs. The fund has indirect exposure to gains, if any, but if the share price goes parabolic, goes up, those returns, they're going to be capped. But on the flip side, it's subject to all potential losses, if the shares of the underlying security decrease in value. So you're only getting some of the upside, but you're getting exposed to all the potential downside, which may not be offset by the income received by the fund. That is a big risk. Now, there are some pros and cons to owning positions synthetically that I've covered more in depth in my other yield max specific funds. Personally, I have yet to see any of these funds consistently pay out a large dividend and maintain their nav. Yet again, these funds are still relatively new and haven't been tested in all market conditions. Some would say this strategy has been practiced for decades by the rich, but I can't imagine they're being as aggressive as the strategy Yieldmax pursues on single stocks, 
all the time they're super close to in the money strikes. Also, you have to take a look at that expense ratio. Not only is it charging the 99 basis points expense ratio, which comes from all the acquired underlying equities, but also another 29 basis points on top of that for managing the universal ETF. That's a grand total of a 128 basis points expense ratio. That's $128 in fees taken off the top every year for every $10,000 invested. Remember, this fee applies whether the fund makes money or not. You're always gonna be stuck paying it. The popular finance YouTuber Jake Tran has a very well-made video on how he explains ARK Innovation fund manager Kathy Wood may have gotten away with the biggest heist of the decade with their ARK investment fees during ARK's heyday in the early 2020s. I'd encourage people to listen to that video before just agreeing to pay so much in expense ratios. I'm not saying people don't deserve to be compensated for their work, but when you have time and tested ETF, like the S&P 500 SPY, giving out a consistent 7-10% to return over time, and they charge less than 10 basis points expense ratio, it's hard to justify coughing up more and more money for something that doesn't seem to have better results. Although I'm glad to see a fund of funds ETF out there for those who don't want to put all their eggs into one basket. If I really liked Yieldmax's strategy, I'd personally rather just own and pick and choose whichever Yieldmax funds I want to focus in on and focus in on those companies that I believed in and would avoid paying that extra amount in fees. These particular ETFs are generally for those with a higher risk tolerance or are willing to trade more risk for higher yields today. I still have a hard time believing in these ETFs for long-term investing, but I can see people being profitable in the short term in certain situations like they have been with Coney recently. Everyone's investing goals and financial position is different. I already know there's going to be some yield max white knight ready to defend its honor in the comments below. But for me personally, I'd rather invest in low high yielding ETFs like JEPQ and JEP B, which still give around a 12% yield, but have been shown to preserve that NAV as their covered call strategies leave more room for upside, plus they have some better diversification. To me, protecting my capital is the most important part. As many great investors emphasize, don't lose money. There's no need to also just jump into this investment right away. Patience is a virtue in life and in investing. One can see how the fund performs over long periods of time before seeing if it's the right fit for them. Now I normally don't make videos about funds this young, but I did get a lot of requests, whether that was people leaving a comment below or chatting me up on the Dividend Discord. We're having some great conversations in there, so be sure to join us on your dividend investing journey. I just made over $400 in dividends this past month. See every single company slash ETF that paid me this past month right here. Check out my full $170,000 portfolio in the link below. My videos are always found in podcast form under the Collect Cash podcast name. Let me know what you think of the Yield Max Universe Funds of Options Income ETFs in the comments below. Make sure you hit that like button and I'll buy Stash and Collect Cash you later.